So today we are doing seven minute pitch. It'll be one minute of feedback from the advisor and then we'll do a roundabout uh, through myself uh, for those two startups. So again, being dynamic and uh, helping you guys uh, learn a little bit about um, what we look at when we're seeing companies that we want to invest in. Today's companies are Hubbly and Vacation Fund. And as I mentioned, we're going to have some great panels and a great keynote. So we're going to kick it off right now with Hubbly and their pitch. So let's give them a hand to get them up here and uh, get them going. Thank you. Hey, folks. My name is Jono. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Hubbly. So we are a technology um, solution provider for small private schools. Uh, so private schools have a big problem. And basically, it's because these are uh, businesses that are run by teachers. I love teachers. But um, essentially, this is also a new problem because up until 20 uh, years ago, a teacher could just open up a school and it would get full by word of mouth and it would stay full. But the market's grown a lot in the last 25 years. There's 25% more private schools than there was 20 years ago. I'm talking about US and Canada. And at the same time, parents have started having about half the amount of children as they used to. So, um, so what that means is these wonderful educators are running businesses in a very competitive landscape. And uh, the result is that they're at about 60% capacity on average. Um, and um, you know, at the same time, there's about 40,000 private schools in the US and Canada, and they bring in $60 billion a year of tuition. But for the same reasons I just mentioned, um, they're still managing about 70% of those schools are managing tuition by paper checks, which takes an average of five days a month of, of working time. So <clears throat> I'm really excited to show you what we do at Hubley. It's, it's growing very quickly because we give the schools basically a CRM uh, with marketing automation built, baked in right inside exactly how they need it. And we also give them an online uh, tuition management system, saving them hours of administrative work uh, every month. So with our marketing automation system, it's it's already built exactly how they need it. They don't have to figure it out. And our customers are getting an average of 300% more inquiries than they used to. And because everything's automated, they're saving about an average of 40 hours of administration time per month. Uh, schools love what we do because we're giving them a lifeline and empowering them to you know, grow their school when they really don't understand because they just don't have the time to, to figure it out when they're running around trying to run a school and they don't have marketing training. Um, so we're looking at a $2 billion annual uh, revenue uh, addressable market. So while there are a couple of small addressable markets that uh, we, where we are getting customers from, we're, we're really focused on the largest and uh, the most underserved and the most valuable sector, which is private schools, which on its own represents $1.2 billion of annual revenue that is up for grabs. Uh, and that is coming from uh, about $130 billion of annual revenue per year. So when we first launched Hubly, we were positioned as an all-in-one school management platform. And uh, that space actually started getting pretty competitive, very busy. And we were having scaling issues because we're bootstrapped. And this is a, a market that's not very tech savvy. So the more we did uh, as a platform, the more hand-holding our customers needed to be onboarded successfully. And so we started looking at all the things that our platform did and where we're getting really delivering the most value and also looked at the market to see where the biggest opportunities opportunities were, and it became very evident that there's this massive opportunity to be a early mover as a marketing first solution for private schools. So about a year and a half ago, we launched a pilot, and the results were really, uh, really astounding. So 2019 was a great year. We had 230% growth, and we went from 60 schools to 140 schools. We went from 300K uh, annual recurring revenue up to 700K. Uh, our fully weighted cost of acquisition was at about $1,500. We brought that down down to $800. And our LTV currently is at uh, 10,000. Uh, but we're, we're going to get that up to 30,000. And I'm going to show oh, I'm going to show you how we did that. But here we go. Okay, boom. All right. So when we first bring in a customer, we bring them in on a CRM uh, solution for $5,000 a year. But we have many other vertical business solutions that we can upsell our customers to that can tack on an, ad an additional $10,000 per school per year. But the most exciting revenue opportunity we have is uh, 
uh, payment processing from tuition. So we actually ran a pilot with a few schools, and we managed about a million dollars of tuition, and we were able to retain uh, about 1% of that tuition as our revenue, as passive revenue. We also learned, however, that doing this requires a lot more support, more resources than we have, so that's why we're raising money, so that we can redevelop the platform and be able to scale that out to the whole market. Uh, so how are we getting customers? Basically, 80% uh, of our customers came from Facebook ads uh, at a cost of $400 per customer um, at a, on an initial $5,000 transaction closed in one call, so we're having an immediate 1,164% uh, ROI on our ad spend. Uh, so this is the way it's going to roll out over the next 12 months, the graph on the left. So we're going to, this quarter we're going to close, we're, we're wrapping up a $400,000 bridge round. We have 40% of that collected, and that's going to allow us to triple our growth over the next year, and uh, I'll be focusing on raising a seed round in the third quarter so that we can uh, essentially redevelop the platform and launch the payment processing in 2021, which will allow us to start really uh, scaling our revenue. Uh, we've got a great team. Uh, I'll do, we've got eight people working in the company now. I'll just focus on, on the two most important folks. Uh, you know, uh, So Mark Selden is our CTO. He's a strategic investor as well. Most importantly, Teresa Beretta has absolutely revolutionized our company and my life. She's come in and just made, she's a complete powerhouse rock star. She does everything with two kids on her lap. I don't know how she does it, but essentially she's allowed me to focus on growth and, and that's a big part of why we, we had 230% growth in the last year. And uh, so what we're doing, again, we're raising $400,000 on a, on a convertible note with a 20% discount, a 3% interest rate uh, based on a $3.5 million cap. Again, that's going to allow us to increase our, re our, our growth at least 300% on our CRM sales this year and raise a bridge and be able to uh, start doubling our revenues uh, with, with payment processing. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Angelo, how about uh, some uh, feedback? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Please. All right. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So let me start with the good. Uh, I... Uh, 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 we've been involved as uh, uh, the supporters fund with uh, with you, Jonah, for a, a couple of years now, mm. and so uh, the uh, uh, the awesome aspect uh, throughout that journey is seeing the po uh, the positive uh, uh, shift that the company has made, right? So the pivot uh, and the, uh, the the positive impact that that pivot has resulted in. So we see the growth. We love the growth. Uh, 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 the, in some of the, the, the key factors that we use in determining whether uh, an opportunity is an opportunity that we want to invest in is not only the uh, growth potential, uh, that's a given, uh, uh, but we also look at what traction have you achieved in the marketplace, how diverse is it, uh, uh, what's their feedback, all positive uh, uh, from your uh, uh, progression. Um, and one important aspect, uh, and maybe I'm uh, sucking up here, is, uh, is you, right? Uh, because ultimately, we have to rely on the uh, uh, founder mm. to be able to execute on all of those wonderful opportunities. So uh, well, we like your uh, uh, commitment, your determination, Thank you. uh, and uh, your ability to, uh, 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 to adjust uh, uh, based on feedback, not only from uh, investors, but most importantly from the marketplace. Mm -hmm. On the things to work on, as we discussed uh, uh, doing our uh, due diligence, is putting together a more structured financial process right. in place so that uh, not only we as investors, uh, but you as, a, uh, uh, as an organization can track the success and the uh, impact that success is having on the bottom line. Because at the end of the day, it's all about uh, profit, right? And not necessarily just the top line. So that's my one minute spiel, okay? Yeah. Is that fine? Did I meet the target? You got the target. All right. I'm just shut the, foot the mic off here. Okay. No, you did a good job. That's perfect. So uh, we'll jump into one question and um, uh, we'll move from there. But Jono, on the business front, uh, can you give us a, a breakdown of where uh, most of your clients are coming from? Is it worldwide? Is it uh, just Canada? Is it the U.S.? Where does that focus uh, happen? Yeah, about 86% of our customers are in the U.S. And um, like the rest are basically in Canada. We have a, a spattering in a couple of here in like 
here and there, like the UK or, or Australia, but that's pretty much the breakdown. And your focus is 100% pushing the US market due to size, or what's the reason you're fully integrated in the US versus Canada? Uh, yeah, it's just that's just the, the ratio of difference of, of market. I mean, we advertise to Canada and the US equally, and that's just that's who comes in the, in the pipeline. So earlier adopters are uh, easier to find in the US based on your product? Well, it's also just way more of them by the same ratio that we have customers. So it's just really lining up with the size of the markets. No, nope, that's perfect. And uh, we appreciate it. And I'll give just a quick snapshot of, uh, uh, of everything. But I think from what Angelo has said, based on the business, um, our interest level is the fact that you're diverse. You're moving into multiple regions uh, across two continents. And of course, you're looking at other ones. Uh, the growth, um, how you've been able to build traction and get the right people on your team into supporting you. Uh, when we first started talking two, three years ago, uh, you were going through uh, change, adoption, you didn't always have the right people behind you. And I think when you brought on uh, your CMO and your CTO, I think that really helped you enable your business. And of course, it's showing through the numbers and through, and through the growth. And uh, now you're at a position where raising those funds will help you uh, double that business. Uh, we like what we see. I think a lot of people like that. And of course, you mentioned that uh, you're going to be looking at the platform to be able to enable a few more components because you've had a focus. And that focus is now allowing you to utilize those revenues to grow the business as well. So we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for the pitch and uh, keep up the, uh, the great work. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. I'll be up there with the booth if you want to come and say hi. Let's hear it. Vacation fun. Come on. Yes, yes. Okay, hello and good evening. My name is Erica Pearson. I am the co-founder and CEO of Vacation Fund. Now, before I jump into this presentation, I'd love to get a show of hands. Raise your hand if in the year 2019, you left some of your vacation days unused. Anyone that left vacation days on the table, you had vacation days allocated, you did not take all of your vacation days. Okay, okay, so I'd say about 50% of people, that's a start. Um, for those of you that did actually raise your hands, I can promise you that you are not alone. So right now, Canadians are leaving about over 30 million unclaimed vacation days each year, and that number is jumping to over 700 million in the United States. The average North American employee receiving paid time off is only taking around 50% of their eligible time. Now, what we've done at Vacation Fund is we've investigated the countless problems encountered as a result of low vacation day utilization, and we've come up with a solution that benefits both employers and employees. When employees aren't periodically taking time off away from work, they can easily become burnt out, disengaged, and have very low productivity. Employers then end up with a balance sheet liability, an increase in short-term disability claims, 60% of which are mental health related, stress and burnout that is causing turnover, employees often getting up and quitting to travel the world, and a highly intelligent, qualified workforce that is not operating at their full potential. At least 50% of employee turnover today can be directly attributed to burnout. Now enter Vacation Fund. Vacation Fund is the most attractive, highly desired, opted into employee benefit on the market today. Vacation Fund allows employees to direct a portion of their paycheck into a separate Vacation Fund account and allows companies to match or top up a portion of those contributions. So not only does this make employees' dream trips more financially attainable, but the company is sending a strong message to employees that they want them to periodically take time off to disconnect and experience something new. Typically, our clients today are doing a 50% match on people's contribution into their Vacation Fund, capped at anywhere between $10 a paycheck and $50 a paycheck. 
So Vacation Fund is the most meaningful, impactful talent and compensation strategy. Imagine for a second receiving additional money from your employer given to you to incentivize you to use more of your vacation time and use that time off really, really well when you do take it. Now the only condition that needs to be met in order for you to be able to take to spend your Vacation Fund money is that you are taking time away from work. So whether it is for a staycation, a road Road trip or a trip across the globe, your now forward-thinking company all of a sudden wants to help you make that experience happen. So with 147 million full-time employees across, a nor across North America and very clear data showing that employees valued their paid time off above all other benefits, despite their hesitation to use it, we are looking at an opportunity for vacation fund of $7 billion annually in North America alone. Now the best part is, we know that it's working. Across our first 17 Canadian and American clients on the platform today and a variety of industries, we know that employees at our client companies highly value Vacation Fund. And we know this because we continuously get over 75% employee opt-in. Yes, 75% employee opt-in across all employees. And so opt-in means not only are employees creating an account, but they have chosen to direct a portion of their paycheck into their vacation fund on a recurring basis. Because this is one of the only employee benefits that every single person at the company can actually enjoy, regardless of your age, or your gender, or your income bracket, or your marital status, or your stage of life. Everyone is expected to take some time off, and your company can help you use that time off better. So as a company, we grew 6x in 2019, but a lot of that was foundational work necessary for this to be more easily scalable over the next four years, by which time we will help make 1 million travel dreams happen by 2024. The, the company's interested in rolling out Vacation Fund as a talent attraction, burnout mitigation, and just general compensation strategy for their employees in their next fiscal year do not disappoint. These pipeline companies collectively employ well over 200,000 people, representing $10 million worth of opportunity in annual recurring revenue for a vacation fund. So we charge companies based on a tiered subscription model that comes out to between two and six dollars per employee per month. But it is also really important to remember that we are a fund administrator collecting travel interests, which means not only do we have a growing pot of money, but we have information regarding where people wanna go, what time of the year, and what their budget is for everything from flights to accommodations to excursions. So not only can we help increase an employee's tenure at a company as they anticipate this future trip that the company wants to help fund, we have turned this platform into lead gen gold for the travel industry. Today we offer our users a complimentary travel concierge to help them plan for their time off, and we're building integrations with multiple travel partners to put discounted offers in front of our users. Vacation Fund is a strategy that turns heads. When we were featured in CBC in June, we were a top trending topic on LinkedIn two days in a row, which resulted in 30 inbound inquiries from companies including TD Ameritrade, the Canadian Cancer Society. Now, thankfully, my talented co-founder, who is here somewhere, built our web-based application to be enterprise ready from the beginning, meaning that we have an opportunity to integrate with any payroll provider that is API-based and any existing company's intranet if they so require. So he is brilliant and a big part of the reason we've been able to operate lean and accomplish so much with such a small team. We've also been privileged to learn from and be supported by some very reputable people and organizations in the tech startup space. We've also continuously been mentored by those with experience in insurance, HR, and travel. And those are also the industries in which exit opportunities have been discussed. Financial institutions, insurance companies, and benefits consultants are continuously looking for ways to acquire clients and offer something new and exciting that is not yet industry standard. And travel companies are also continuously looking for ways to stay relevant and gain insight from users about what kinds of trips they want to go on in their future and how much money they will have for that trip.
We are currently raising a $400,000 round on a 3 mil US cap, 15% discount, of which the first 160,000 has been committed. This money will help us grow our team, onboard a few of the larger organizations in the pipeline, and invest in our marketing and PR efforts, as awareness is a huge priority right now. 2020 is the year that Vacation Fund gains significantly greater awareness and traction with companies that have between 100 and 5,000 employees. If you believe in Vacation Fund as the new standard in employee benefits, come find us. Thank you. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you very much, that was good. Angelo, you're up. Uh, great to meet you, Erica. You too. Uh, great job on the presentation. Thank you. And um, I, actually, I probably fit the demographic of probably the type of uh, employer you would want to reach out. Uh, so awesome. prior to uh, 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 joining the investment community, I was a, a director at the National Research Council. And there, there was the ability to bank your vacation days. Right. So when you talk about the pain point, I, uh, I experienced that because uh, employees that were leaving uh, would have a bank of possibly one year, in which case they turn around and say, I don't want the one year benefit all in one lump sum, uh, spread it out over an entire year, yet I won't come into work at all. Right. But technically, you're still, he's still or she is still on the payroll and you can't replace. So it's a huge pain point that you uh, have identified. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I agree with you. Generally, these people that just bank these things, uh, you say, what's, you know, uh, there's life beyond the work, right? And beyond the paycheck. And so yeah, I, I think you solve a, a pain point on both both sides. So uh, uh, we look at this from the supporters fund as a real uh, opportunity for us to explore significantly further uh, to determine to what degree we want to participate in. So I like uh, 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 your uh, in-depth understanding of uh, the business uh, 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 opportunities that exist, your pipeline. Uh, blue chip companies. Um, I, I, I would sort of expand, although it, it, it was, uh, I'd like to learn more, but look at the government also uh, as being a, a potential. There's a huge workforce there that could really scale your uh, revenue potential. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think we're in the right ballpark in terms of uh, where you need to be from a valuation point of view uh, and the impact that that uh, uh, investment would provide you in terms of run, runway. I'd uh, like to learn more about uh, the revenue growth uh, to assess how impactful that investment will be. But great stuff. Perfect. Thank you, Angelo. Um, and we'll jump into a couple of quick questions. So I will kind of almost steer to the same question we asked before, which yep. is uh, on your uh, expansion, are you predominantly focused and on the US or the Canadian side and where are you getting the most traction currently based on your revenue model? Yeah, the last six companies I think that we onboarded came from the west coast of Canada, where their values might be a little bit more aligned and it's less of a hard sell versus maybe in Toronto we have more workaholics, I don't know. Um, but it's been a lot of Canada just because that's been where our network has been. And also as the companies that we're onboarding get bigger and bigger, like we do need to find avenues and relationships with C-suite executives to make it a part of a broader strategy rather than, oh, this is just a, a new perk that we're implementing. Like the message really in a lot of ways has to come from the top. So that's where our, our network has been. It's been here and it's been growing on the West Coast as well. We've also got a little bit of a Chicago presence after having done Techstars there. So a lot of good interest there from American companies as well. Both of our American clients right now are growing tech startups. They offer unlimited vacation time and so they're actually using this to encourage people, like have people's vacation fund expire 12 months from the time that it's earned in order to say, I don't care when you take time off, you need to take time off at least every 12 months. We'd rather lose people for two weeks than lose them to burn out forever. And what is your, the message that you're going to the C-suites with to convert their mind thinking uh, process? And uh, we've talked about this a, a bunch of times, but um, getting the similarities so they understand that, hey, this is very similar to what you're doing in dental or you're doing in uh, 
I wear a massage. How are you getting them to start to trigger the, yes, I need to do this to keep my employees. I need to keep people working and happy. So how are you going about that process? Yeah, I think I think some of it really does come from testimonials. And thankfully, when CBC did the CBC, the national feature, they interviewed some of our users because as soon as someone that often is in a C-suite position that may not be or have a lot of millennials in their life, as soon as you go to someone younger in the workforce and you say, what would your be reaction be if we helped put money towards your time off? It like you just watch people's faces light up like their faces sell itself so really the conversation comes to yeah go back and ask your people if this is something that people would get really excited about and the answer 99 percent of the time is absolutely and what's the big fish that you're trying to close right now who's the uh best or the business that you're really diving into and you're like i'm they're mine i'm taking them down I have to say Deloitte, as much as it's a little bit op like optimistic, they we've had some really good meetings with them. Their young people are using seven and a half vacation days. It, like it's a balance sheet liability. It's a burnout problem. They're competing with all of the other firms. It it seems doable in my mind. It seems doable within the next twelve months. Do we have anybody in here from Deloitte? You, you guys <laughs> need to connect. You need to talk. She needs to help you out. You need more vacation. Deloitte, you're in. All right, thank you, that was great. So I think to give you, yes, thank you. Big hand, big hand, thank you, thank you. So I think to give a, a quick uh, synopsis of that, I think uh, one, we're very excited for what you're doing. You've come a long way since we first started talking. Uh, I think your messaging has really shaped around the fact that people need to focus on taking vacation and up those days from seven days to 14. But I think the biggest one for me is that this is a FinTech play. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, I've said this a few times, but you really are uh, a great fit for that. And I think there's a lot of great things that are gonna come. So uh, fantastic job and thank you very much. So just to get wrapped up, we're gonna do the 30 second spots. We're gonna move quickly uh, so that you guys can get upstairs, eat pizza, and uh, jump into um, any of the breakout groups uh, that we're gonna have. So if we can get um, Green Igloo, Passion, Woken, uh, Works Empire, Total Transformation, Omnibid, Atlas, Momfluence, Backers, Actual, and Scout, and Node to please come up to the front. Thank you. All right, ready to roll? Yeah. All right, you got 30 seconds. Uh, your name, business, what you're about, and then at 30 seconds, we will lead on to the next one. You ready? Yeah. Awesome. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'm the founder of Green Igloo. One in eight families in Canada face food insecurity every single day. That means they're without a reliable access to affordable and nutritious food. This increases dramatically in indigenous and remote communities. Green Eagle tackles food insecurity by building greenhouses in remote communities across Canada and pairing it with education to ensure long-term sustainable operations. Currently, we're in nine communities operating five Arctic greenhouses and expanding quickly. If you want more info, check us out at greenigloo.com or check me out up there. Thank and you. your name is? Stephanie. Awesome, thank you, Stephanie. Hi, my name is Amanda, I run Woken. Um, we sell compostable Nespresso capsules with Italian premium coffee. Um, right now we're a direct-to-consumer brand, we're selling on Amazon and on our website, and we're looking for funding to help us expand into retail, and also, of course, for marketing costs, so that we can really um, you know, get our product out there and have as many people try it as possible. Um, also, 40% of Americans have a single serve machine. So, and that mixed in with the climate and eco and your trend. Name We're is? Good. Amanda, and you can awesome. find me upstairs or you can Thank check you. out woken.coffee. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Stuart Campbell. I'm the founder of Passin. Uh, Amazon now fulfills over 50% of all of American e-commerce. It's massive. $100 billion of clothing spend is, is happening online and 30% of that gets returned, primarily due to poor fit. Things You'll buy five items and you'll return four items and it's free shipping and free returns. We've launched a digital fitting service in partnership with major malls. It's a working product already. We launched it in September. We measure people in about two minutes. We give them their own digital measurement profile with all their measurements. And your name is? Stuart Campbell. It's a cool measuring application that helps e-commerce companies in clothing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey everyone, my name is Arslan. I'm the co-founder of Atlas Networks and we're building a platform to help people manage their personal data because we know everyone produces a lot of da data every single day and we want to build a platform to help people organize all of that, get more value from it and share it securely with people and organizations that they trust and get more insights into their productivity and health and just become a br bank for your data. And your name is? My name is Arslan, Atlas Networks. Come check us out upstairs. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea DeSaint. I'm the president of Total Transformations, uh, executive and life uh, coaching. Uh, yes, another coach. My passion for helping others has led me here after 24 years in the corporate world. Currently, we're trying to morph into a products and services company that will enable everyone to have a one-stop shop <laughs> Sorry. And your name is? It's Andrea DeSaint. Awesome, thank you. I was trying to give you a heads up by doing the countdown. Yep, yep, yep. Hi, my name is Chelsea. Uh, my company is Momfluence, and we're an influencer marketing platform. Uh, we really believe that Instagram and social media is the new shopping mall, and influencers are the new salespeople. But finding the right people, managing the campaign, and analyzing the results can be overwhelming for most brands. Um, our marketplace will help brands execute influencer marketing uh, that's easy, affordable, and effective. Uh, we have only moms on our platform because we know that moms make all the decisions, and we love moms. Bye. <laughs> Chelsea, awesome. Chelsea. Awesome. Thank your name is. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Chef Charlotte Langley, co-founder of Scout Canning, a modern seafood consumer brand that, uh, you know, no one has a favorite seafood brand, and we are going to change that. Scout is uh, waking up the outdated category of seafood CPG, a $2.5 billion industry in North America, where the legacy brands are disconnected to the oceans. We make craft seafood products for modern consumers that are sourced and hand-packed in Canada. We are a climate action brand reinvesting a portion of revenue into ocean-healthy projects. Scout achieved 400K in revenue as a part-time business, and I would love to connect with any CPG investors that are interested in the ocean. name is? Chef Charlotte Langley. I like it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vertika. I'm the founder of Omnibed. In 2020, in Canada, $2.3 billion of display ads will be spent programmatically. In today's world, where biddable media is quickly becoming the only way of buying media across digital out of home, audio, display, video, Omnibid is the expert. We have embraced custom algorithms, machine learning, emerging ad formats, and innovative ad platforms. And your name is? If your business needs sales, contact me, Vertika. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anand from Works Empire. So if you are a business owner who want to save a lot of money for a job posting, it's a nonprofit for hobby I'm just doing. Uh, so you can post unlimited jobs on Works Empire without any cost. And uh, it's ad free, feed free, and we don't track your locations. The only reason we are doing it just to uh, help the business owners who can't afford to pay uh, free uh, post jobs you know, in LinkedIn or Indeed. And your name is? Anand. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bilal from Octo Robotics. Imagine waking up in the morning and going outside and seeing everything is covered in a thick layer of snow. Knowing you're going to be late for work, you go outside and you start shoveling. The way we clear our driveways has been the same for many years without any major innovation. Our product, the Outtake, is a fully autonomous, self-driving snowblower that will clear your driveway on its own and is very innovative. With the innovative solution, it gives convenience and also introduces another level of autonomy to your daily life while focusing on focus. You can find me up there. My name is Bilal, and that's my co-founder right there, Osafad, and we're Octo Robotics. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Justin Fox, uh, founder and CEO of Backers.ca. Uh, we are a social funding platform that enables private uh, companies to raise capital by selling equity in their business to retail investors. What I'd like everyone to pull out your phone and text your name to this number. Pull out your phone. Does anyone want to connect with us and get funding? It's 647-693-8867. All right, and as we like to say, fuck venture capital. Thank you. Thank you.